At a school like Rice, which is very heavily undergraduate focused, the half-life of tradition is about two years because uh, it takes about that long for something to flower or die, uh, as the memory of the people around here is about that long. Despite that, there are a few traditions that have really continued for a long time. Uh, one of the nicest ones, I think, is uh, dates from the very earliest days of the institution when the very first president, Edgar Lovett, decided that uh, he would formally shake the hand of every incoming graduate to the university at their matriculation ceremony. And then a few years later when they graduated, he shakes their hand again. And that is still done today. And uh, you still symbolically pass through the Sally Port in one direction as you enter the university formally and uh, pass back out through the Sally Port of Lovett Hall uh, as you graduate. And one of those sort of new traditions is the idea that undergraduates will not walk from the inside of the academic quadrangle to the Sally Port to the east side of, the, of, of a Lovett, College, Lovett Hall until they graduate. And that has become a really strong tradition now. The idea that students will not walk through Sally Port until they graduate. That's a tradition that really began in the mid-1980s. The founding president, Edgar O'Dell Lovett, came here with the idea of, their, of instituting a uh, uh, college system. And by college system, he meant a system whereby students, undergraduates and graduate students, and maybe even faculty, uh, lived and took meals and uh, learned in the same environment. They're all co-ed, and they have all majors, freshman through senior, and uh, athletes and poets and physicists and English majors and engineers are all living together. So it means that when students come here, there are no sororities or no fraternities. Everybody is a member of a college, so there's none of that kind of nasty competitiveness, I think, to get into sororities and fraternities. They're totally democratic. They're totally diverse. The times are 11.53 and a half and 11.58. There is a, a quote tradition that has started, and I say quote because I don't remember it from my time, so that's my benchmark. Hey, Rice! On Fridays at noon, there is a round Willie statue in the center of the academic quadrangle. What is called the gratuitous Friday cheer. And uh, the gratuitous Friday cheer is a bunch of people getting together and clapping and cheering and um, celebrating the fact that it's Friday and they're on the downhill slide of the weekend. I suppose most colleges have traditions that they consider unique, but I do think Rice has some traditions that really are unique. One of, one of which is the beer bike race that is related to the college system that for many students is the biggest athletic social event on the campus. When the college system was being planned to open in the spring of 1957, they wanted to have some set of some competitive event. When it first began, the students uh, in the four colleges just had regular bikes, just the kind of bike that any student would have. They, in those days, they drank beer. Now they tend not to drink beer because they find out that since it's a timed event that you can drink the equivalent number of ounces of water. But also uh, because of the change in the beer drinking age, they've had to sort of accommodate to uh, laws. But there's another event on campus that's called Baker 13, now called Club 13, and it involves students uh, basically wearing shaving cream and they run around the campus uh, at night time. It gets its name, of course, from Baker College at Rice University. It began as a Friday the 13th blowing off steam activity in 1975 uh, at a time when streaking was popular on college campuses. Now, why exactly the people at Rice and at Baker College at Rice decided to add another element to it is unclear. Uh, but they decided, uh, apparently for anonymity's sake, that they would add shaving cream to this mixture. People say that they, you know, these future world leaders and captains of industry run around the campus naked. That's not true. They're wearing tennis shoes. Uh, only a pervert would run barefooted. There has been a tradition for 90 years of fairly elaborate sort of uh, almost like practical jokes. At Rice, a prank is called a jack. Some of the most famous jacks were, of course, turning Willie's statue. They had some disciplinary activity against the one student who was caught, and uh, he never told who the other people were. One of the really good ones was when the Board of Trustees was about to name uh, the new president of the university. A very accurate knockoff of the university's official newspaper, not the student newspaper, but the Rice News, was created by an unknown, still unknown, band of students. 
and it said, we are proud to introduce this new president of Rice University, and there was a fake picture, and we still don't know who that person was, but it was actually picked up by a wire service and uh, became nationally reported that the new president of Rice University was this completely fictitious person. So um, that was quite a good jack. I'd still like to know who did that one. The Valhalla is the graduate student pub at Rice University. Uh, it's a hobbit hole of a little bar underneath the steps. This is a drinking hole for the graduate students. It's kind of hidden away in Keck Hall. Uh, started as like a smoking room, like I said, uh, in the chemistry department. It was famous for having really inexpensive beer. If you could, you know, graduate students don't have a lot of money. And all of the bartenders, including the managers of the, uh, the facility, are volunteers. They want a place for people to unwind, so you're not allowed to uh, have a tie on when you're in Valhalla, or you'll get it cut off. There was a bartender at Valhalla named John Schroeder, who served as a bartender for more than 20 years, 25 years. He imposed a very strict dress code, and the dress code was that if you wore your tie, into Valhalla and you came in dressed up as though you were a, a serious business person on a Friday afternoon, you deserve to have that tie severed from your body and its severed remnants would be displayed on a trophy wall there in the bar. In honor of John and that tradition that is continuing still. You see these doors, you have no idea what they lead to and they come down to this dark, dim place and it's like, like you said, it's just in the middle of campus and people don't know about it They're outside. It's kind of Rice's own thing and, you know, we want to keep it for Rice. It's, you know, kind of very uniquely Rice. I think for Rice students, people who've gone here, that the single most important tradition at Rice is the Honor Code. And the Honor Code began at the very beginning. Uh, in 1914, you already had a constitution. And uh, the fact that, you know, exams are, are not proctored. It means that when you take exams, there are not professors walking up and down the aisles looking at you. It's, it's assumed that no one uh, cheats. And I personally, in teaching here for 30 years, have never had a situation in which I believed uh, that a student cheated on an exam. I think that anything that unites people in a sense of community uh, and persists over time is, uh, is of value to an institution. As we approach our 100th year, uh, I think just the fact that we, we all have a, a rice ring is a wonderful tradition and that uh, those rice rings basically have been unchanged for all the years that, that they exist. And uh, when you see one out in the world, it's a, it's a very clear and obvious signal that there's someone else who's been some of the, through some of the same things that you have been. Uh, someone who's, who's had those same experiences and some, someone with whom you have something in common. And that's the value of tradition, whatever that tradition is. It's hard to know, since I've been at Rice a long time, it's hard to know if things are at Rice are truly unique or all schools have some version of this. I really don't know, but I do, I do think this is really true at Rice, that there is a combination of real seriousness of purpose and also a tradition of fun and whimsicality. <laughs>